I'm going to go out to the hat. Okay. okay, over to you, Melvin. Hang on a minute. We haven't done yet. <laughs> right, you're on. That's right. Good. right, can you see all that? Yeah, yeah. that's good, Melvin. Yeah. Can, can you see my ugly face? Yeah. No. 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 Right. You're, you're all right. There, um... He's on the sidebar. Side yeah, that's side. okay. Yeah, are you okay with that? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. hang on a minute. What we can do is we can no, that, that's, stop that's... share. If I click on pin. Can you pin both? Two of the um, back. So to uh, that's to share your full screen. Right. And then the guys just need to change this up on their screen. Right. To show the views. So it's just you. You know the top you screen to the... that you've got where it says views. If you click on my 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 face. You can change the view, you, you, you can change the view to just me. No. I've got to find you again now. Yeah, you you pin it. If you pin the pin the hook, guys. I'm trying to do go the sidebar with all the frames. Go up to view, and it will say speaker and the one you've got. Right. Share yeah, both. That's it. Sorry, Melvin. It's all right. Don't worry. Right. That, that, that should be it. I've got you centre screen and you fly in the top right hand corner. No, it wants to be the other way around. Okay, so how do we swap that? You pin the pin the hook one first. How do I pin that? Well, three little dots like you would normally. No, it's a different screen here now. Derek, I've got the, the hook in the script, the full screen, and the picture on the right hand side. Yeah. Yeah, I've got the yeah. same. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, we'll go that. with that then. So that should be okay. And me. Right, I'll got push there. record for you as well. Right. We're okay to go, are we? Yeah. Sorry, right, my technicians have just gone now. So if we do anything else, we'll create without a battle. <laughs> Let me see if I can if I can change that um what's it full screen. Oh, Are we in focus? Yes. Yeah. Focus, yeah. Oh. Side by side. There we go. That's it. Right. We've got six flies for you tonight. We've got a Lake Olive. A Lake Olive. We've got a, a Crippler. We've got uh, a Muddler, Silver Dabbler Muddler, um, a, a Gorgeous George, uh, a Mayfly Nymph that we did very well with in Ireland, uh, and a Spent Mayfly. Okay. I've, the last two meetings I've done with you, I've, I've, I've shared with you all my best flies. <laughs> <laughs> No, the, <laughs> these are in the second division, but uh, they do work. I have caught fish on them. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Not yet. No, you crack on. Not them. yet. Right. Okay. Now then, the mayflies in Ireland, um, particularly um, Loch Arrow and Loch Chilin, are massive. Yeah. And Walker's mayfly nymph. Is tied on a box standard size eight. Yeah. The, uh, sorry, on a box standard size 10. These mayflies are tied on uh, size six and size eight long shanks. Okay. Wow. So they, they are huge. And I was fishing with Kevin Sheridan uh, on Sheila. And we had three days on Sheila. One day we were on nymphs. Another day we were on a dries. And then we had a bit of dry, um, wet fly fishing. But the nymphs, I caught two fish. Uh, and this is when not a lot of fish were being caught. Uh, Stevie Mum were fishing the same time as we were. I know Stevie very well. He's a top fishing guide and casting instructor over there. And he'd had one fish for his three days and I managed six. And I thought I was extremely lucky to get, to, to get those. But anyway, these are the flies that gone. This mayfly... You see, you, you've got to imagine being out on this great lock and under the, the biggest mayfly hatch that you, you would ever been in, 
They were popping up everywhere and not a fly topping. Sorry, not a fish topping. Okay. So they were bound to be eating them. So they were taking the nymphs and they were taking them underneath. Booby on the point, three nymphs on a die seven, just figuring it, throwing them out and just figuring it, them back. And we were casting them out to a point where when we were figurating them back, I wanted them to touch bottom. So we were fishing all the depths and right on the bottom. And the fish that took were right on the bottom. So I had two fish, one of them was six pound, all on the bottom. Right, so I'm gonna tie this mayfly for you. And, and, and when, I, when I tie mayflies, I don't usually weight them. How I get my flies down is with my fly line. So I'm fishing a, a fast sinking fly line. In fact, it was a DI-7. Right, okay, so this is, this is the mayfly. So we've got um, um, a olive tying thread and I'm coming down the hook shank. And I'm coming to that magic point midway between the barb and the point. And I'm just gonna snip off this excess. And I'm gonna put in half a dozen tails. Ish. And they don't want to be really long. Sort of there. And I'm just pinching and looping them on. Then we go. Come on, behave yourself. Right. Let me tie that off. Now, what I'm using for body is this stuff. I don't know if you can see it. Dirty bug yarn. And that's all it is. It's, it's a yarn. It's a twisted yarn, two-ply. That's it. So I'm going to tie that in. Come down the way. And I want to catch the fish's attention. So the rib that I'm going to put in is this mirror flash. I love mirror flash. It just gives it that something else. Okay. So now I can wind my body on. Get that out of the way. How long just created that taper in the body? And that colour's golden olive. Turn it off. I'm going to tie my rib now.
You can fold it back or just cut it off. It stays in. Okay, now we need some legs for it. And we have partridge, just a um, dyed olive partridge. So all I do is I, I go like that with my hackle pliers, force them out. Measure what I want. <laughs> I'll get rid of that, get rid of that. That'll do wish. We'll tie that over the back. Okay. And they want now to form the abdomen. And we're going to use dirty buggy arm again, but in dark olive. I don't know if, if anybody does invertebrate monitoring, uh, but you will notice that just as the nymph's about to hatch, it changes, this thorax changes colour, changes colour from olive to dark olive. And they hatch in the tray. Robin, you said they were really big, these mayflies up there. Is this pattern yeah. slightly bigger than the one you're imitating? It, it's probably a slightly bigger. Just to not much bigger. more onto yours. Yeah. The, 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 the huge things. Yeah, huge things. I've just twisted out the dirty bug gap. So I'll put a bit more on. And now what I want to do is I'm just going to come over the top to help strengthen it up. Come over again. I need to put the thorax cover in. Elvin? Yeah? What sort of depth of water were you fishing these nymphs in? Is that Mr. Smalley? Might be. I'm not telling you. <laughs> 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 about uh, 
20 foot, but from 15 to 20 foot. Right. Let's tie the partridge further down. Tie them down. And the thorax cover. Let's take these out. Thorax cover over the top. Neaten everything up. We finish it. Meth lining. Tidy fly. Okay, big fly. Okay. Yeah, don't be frightened. I'm going big. What what size hook is it, Melvin? Please. This is a size eight B eight hundred. B eight hundred. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. Um, sling them out, and like I say, you, you want to be just touching bottom. If they're coming up with a bit of um, bit of weed on, that all the better. If you wanted to weight it, I guess you'd weight it under the thorax, would you? I would weight it under the thorax if yeah. I wanted to weight it. But if you're fish, fishing with a, is that Mr. Sheridan there? It is. No. Oh, oh, it is. <laughs> oh, it is. So. He'll tell you what we're doing. And um, yeah, yeah, it certainly worked for me, didn't it, Kev? Oh, it did. Great three days. Now, this nymph and one with a red rib as well. Yeah, so same, same pattern, red rib. But yeah, certainly did the business. Okay, right. We'll get that one out of the way and get tidied up. Any questions? Come on, you must ask some questions. What about that lad from Lancashire? Any questions, Steve? Did you drink all your beer at Yorkshire Shore last week? No, we had two and a half gallons left. <laughs> I didn't take a lot. For sure. Pardon? Mel, did you For say sure that, to that? Say that again. Did you call that a pond olive? We call it a mere fly nymph. That's all it is. Right up. Yeah. Nothing hard and fast about it. Yeah. I'll put that in that back box. I start I, I, before I uh, when I'm setting up. I always get all my materials out and I usually put them in plastic bags. But the trouble with putting them in plastic bags, everything's got to go back in again. Yep. So I'm putting them in these plastic boxes now, which is which is great, really. Because it all goes back in very quickly. Right. Okay. So I'm gonna tie now a crippler. Just to get me hand in, that may fly nib's quite an easy tie, and so is this. Um, so we'll, we'll do this before we get onto a bit more difficult difficult flies. Right, this is a crippler. Um, cripplers, I believe, were, were invented by Rob Denson. Um, and Rob, um, God bless him, 
always say is that they don't need tails. And I, I think they do need tails because I think it just balances the fly. Whether they catch more fish or not, I don't know. But I've, I've done, always done extremely well with them with tails. But anyway, this one's without a tail. And we're going to, we're going to, uh, and it's one of mine. And I caught a fish on Malam Town with it on Wednesday, Tuesday, in the rain. Right. So, black time thread. What size hook, Melvin? It's a, this is a 10. Now, cripplers, 8, 10s and 12s. You'll have trouble cap, uh, getting the, um, the gold. Well, it's not a golden pheasant. This is... Um, this is a, uh, a, a pheasant, a Michigan blueback um, pheasant dyed blue. Uh, it's a rump feather dyed blue. But you have difficulty getting small enough feathers for size 12s. They're difficult to get. Right, so we are now going to put a tag on it. It's a nice silver tag. I generally put tags on if I'm going to fish them. Sea trout or salmon. Come on, Sam. Uh, um, pardon? Come on, Sam Oaks. Yeah, B one seven B one seven five. I don't use anything else. I've just got a lot of faith in Come on, Oaks. They don't bend. There you go. So you. It's not a massive tag. You see, I think they'll ugly uh, with large tags on. So I'll just nip that off. Just neaten everything up. I'm going to put it back in again. You could have gone over and, and backwards and forwards, but you, you create this huge hump, which I don't like. And if you use open turns, you don't create the bulb. Right. So now it's just black seal spur. This is semper seal um, that I've chopped up. So we've got a nice scruffy body. And we're going to use grizzle hackle tie um, dyed red. And this is a hen. If I'd have got a cock hackle um, grizzle dyed red, I'd probably use that. Yep. A couple of turns in the head, and then down the body. Three, three or four turns. I generally like three. Go so my Yorkshireman, and I get more feathers. Took more flies out of my feathers, and then the wide rib. Now it's a it's a hen. You could trap feathers, so I'd like to bring them out to ninety degrees, and then round we go. It's not done a bad job, really.
and you can pick the seal spur out or scruff it up. The only problem is scruffing um, seal spur up with one of these things is that um, it uh, it destroys the hackle really, and it doesn't look neat. Not that flies should be neat. So just get a bit of picking in them. Hey Melvin, have you ever ever tried uh, tying the same fly but uh, uh, running the uh, the rib up first before the hackle and having a wire tied in behind it and come back? Uh, yeah, that is a good. That is a great idea. No, I hadn't. But thank you for that. Yeah. Oh, you don't you don't trap in those. You don't uh, trap anything lines. in. No, no, that's grand. Yeah. yeah. So you can so, use like, yeah, a, just... like a, a black wire, so it, it blends in with that uh, black seal spur. Yeah, that's great. That Rick. Yeah. 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 Love it. Yes, sir. Right. So we now got the the pheasant, uh, the Michigan pheasant dyed blue. So we'll get rid of all the rubbish. And again, come in with the hackle pliers. Just nip the centre, bring the feathers back, tie it in at the tip. Gets a little thick up here, that's why we're tying at the tip. The rachis gets a bit thick. Okay. So we're tying there. Bring it back over. Pull it out. Chop that off. Double the hackle. When you're double, doubling a hackle, don't pull, pull with this hand. Don't pull with your left hand. Do all the pulling with your right hand and, and pull the hackle through your fingers. And it really doubles well. And then what I like to do is I like to hold, I like to break the stem. <laughs> Oops. Not the source of all. I'm not the only one. <laughs> See, he's ham fisted foundryman. That's what I blame it on. I'm sure I've told you this before, but it was about 10 years before. I realised that when you were tying something in, you didn't need to bend the hook. Mm. I'd always want to behave. <laughs> right. So we've got fly dresses from all over the world on tonight, then. Yeah. Wow. Got lunch break here in Canada. <laughs> what time is it in Canada? Uh, it's 10 after 12. Right. In, Al in Alberta. Right. Yeah. What time is it with you, Brett? With me? With Brett, yeah, it's ten after twelve in the afternoon in in uh, in Alberta here. So lunch break. Hmm. I've lost it. <clears throat> we all lost it. Oh, come back! It's come back. I, I lost it years ago. <laughs> yeah, same here. Sorry, it's 11.30 in the morning. I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> this is that a good day for me uh, for, this, for, for these meetings. So to go, to go to Darlington, I take my mate up to Darlington that's had a stroke and he buys cattle there. So it's a long drive if he, if he had to drive himself. 
So I usually take him up. So Thursdays aren't good for me. It's usually seven o'clock before I'm getting back. It's nearly anyway. 20 to 8. In Devon, it will be direct anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Who have we got in Devon? Pete. Pete. Yeah. <clears throat> in Melbourne, we lost focus there, just so you know. Oh, right. Are you still out of focus? Mm -hmm. I'll sort that out. <clears throat> I wonder why we went down to focus. Did I wonder that? Yeah. Better? That's it. Yeah. I'm trying to everything up. Okay. Right. What What was the blue cloaking hack called, Mervyn? What's that from? It's a, a, a Michigan blue pheasant. I don't know if you've seen a Michigan blue, but um, instead of having a, a red patch on its back, it has a blue patch on its back. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's a very light blue. Could you use guinea fowl, Mervyn? Well, not really. You you you, you don't want right. the you don't want the black and white. Uh, sorry, the black and blue. It'll be black and blue. You don't really right. want that. You just want just nice little bits of mottling in it. Yeah, and that's yeah. what you what you get with that. Yeah, but with these I mean, flies, the, I don't know if you will you, you will agree with me, but I I personally think that they need tails. Whether the fish think they need tails or not. Yeah, I think you're right. And and what would you use for a tail on this pattern if you were putting one on? Uh, I would probably turn it into an octopus and put a, a fluorescent tail in it. Maybe orange, maybe um, greeny, chartreuse, something like that. But um, Like a curved up feather, like a golden pheasant dyed. You could use that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have used that. I've used um, a golden pheasant um, um, breast feather underneath when I'm doing a clan chief prep look. Uh, I'll put um, a golden pheasant um, uh, breast feather and a golden pheasant rump feather on oh, with okay. the red at the bottom and the yellow one on top of it. So it's yeah. a little bit like a clan chief, as a clan chief tail. Of course, the original clan chief had a, a feather tail and not the fluorescent tail. But they both work equally as well. But yeah. So you just right. basically wanted to add, in a, add an attractor, a hot spot, a just yeah. something in the back end to, to get their attention. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if you were fishing for Daphnia feeders, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, um, I was fishing with a guy uh, called uh, Dominic Kerrigan, uh, who fishes Loch Melvin, where there's um, a, a lot of uh, their fishing is done for uh, Daphnia feeders. And... Um, you had to have a pair of sunglasses on when you opened these fly boxes. <laughs> they were that bright and that fluorescent. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have that definitely at times here. We've got a lot of Daphne feeders here in Alberta and British Columbia, and you, 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 a lot of bright flies at, yeah. at times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so that's the land chief. Sorry, that's the, uh, the crippler. I haven't made a name for it yet, but... Yeah, the Ludlow Crippler. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Any more questions? Do you, are, are you getting those, uh, the, the blue feathers? Are they, is that how they come or are you dyeing them? No, I'm dyeing them. The, oh. the, the, the actual blue feather on the back, it's like an iridescent blue. And I'm pretty sure if you put it into the water, it'd turn grey. So I over dye them. What dyes do you use? I use RIT dyes. Rick. Oh, RIT. RIT. Yeah. R -I -T. Yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah. Where do you get them from? You'll get them off the internet. You get you. Um, you can get, either get them powdered or get them liquid. Yeah. Um, uh, I get them liquid. And if you go onto RIT's website, there is colour charts and it tells you how to get specific colours, which is marvellous. Okay, thanks. Sorry, what was but the I name also of that again? Pardon? What's the name of that again? Spell it. RIT. R-I-T. RIT. Die. Oh, okay. RIT. Um, die. Okay. Die. RIT. Okay. RIT. RIT. Yeah. 
Is it um, my Yorkshire accent? <laughs> I know you keep, you keep saying my name. I'm like, no, I don't die him. You don't use vineyards. <laughs> Rick's dies. No, no, it's rubbish. No, no, no. Uh, but I find, and not, not everybody finds this, but I find vineyards dies to be extremely accurate in the colours. If you get golden olive, the, the golden olive, you get dark olive, the dark olives, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. What I don't like about Vineyards dies is that um, they don't go very far. They cut down. There's an awful lot of salt in them. Um, so you have to put a lot of dye in for not dying a lot of feathers. I guess I'll, I'll have to take a look. I've been, believe it or not, I've been using Kool Aid for years and then setting it in vinegar and it works great. Yeah. But uh, there's I'll also, to... uh, but but I mean, yeah. we're in the, the world, what used to be the world's capital for dying, which was West Yorkshire. You know, mm. we worsted, worst wool cloth, um, all died. So uh, around here, there used to be hundreds of dye, uh, dye houses. Um, and there's, there is still quite a lot. So I do get pow pow powdered dyes. Um, there's a place in, um, uh, there's a, there's a, Place in Huddersfield, it's called World of Woolcraft or World of Wool, and I, I buy dyes from them. World of Woolcraft, that's funny. Okay, right, we'll take that out. Um, right, we're going to tie a little dry fly. Now I've got my eye in. Put my there. This is a little lake olive. This fellow, put it on, on Facebook. Not that long ago, that fella. Yeah. So we'll, we'll tie that one for you. I'm not going to do it with a black tail. I'm going to do it with a yellow tail. That's the deer hair I'm going to use for the wing. That's that's a, a red dye. That's golden yellow red dye, which is a wonderful substitute for um, picric acid. In fact, it's it, it's it's it in a shade difference different than picric acid. After all, you know, there's there's a lot of mythology around picric acid, but at the end of the day, picric acid is just a dye. It's supposed to have, have magical qualities and you can only get X colours from it. It's a load of baloney really. It's a very carcinogenic dye. So you it is be very, very um, careful. I, uh, I've used it all my working life. I hope you wear gloves then, Melvin, because it dies oh, yeah, your skin. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, if you didn't wear gloves when using picric acid, for a start, it looks like you'd been on 60 a day for all your, all your life, you know, because your fingers just instantly turn yellow. Mm. Um, and you can't get it off. It's, it's very difficult to get off. How do, so, you get hold, how do you get hold of it then? Because it's not that easy to get hold well, of. Well, you could get it? hold of it through Semperfly at one time, but it got very expensive, so they stopped doing yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, it killed Lawrence Feeney. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and it probably killed uh, Rod Ty as well. Oh, that's for sure. Um, which was sad. Um, but we... we and it, it, it has explosive qualities as well as it's car carcinogenic. Yeah. So if it ever goes crystalline, it can go with a bang. And they used to make it in, uh, use it in um, percussion caps. Yeah. So anything, an, any shock, and it goes off. Uh, so if you got it in a concentrated solution and you started to get it crystalline, um, you call the bomb squad. That sounds like the predecessor to Tannerate. <laughs> <laughs> So, but I used it, and we used it in aqueous solutions, like you do when you you're dying, um, and never had a problem, uh, providing you dealt with it properly. You kept your hands covered, and you um, you didn't breathe any fume in. There wasn't a great deal of fume. Um, but I had no problem with it. Right. Okay. Melvin. Pardon. Do you use any turmeric? No, I don't. Um, I know a man that does. 
Jackie Mahon. I don't know if you have you heard of Jackie Mahon. Yeah. Have you had him on here? You need to have him on here. Um, Jackie uses it as well as all sorts of herbs and um, yeah, he, he uses a lot of that. Because I think turmeric gives a very similar colour to what you're aiming for. Yeah, well, that's that's it as well. That's that's done. So this is a a pheasant tail that's been dyed in um, red, golden, yellow. Now I want my tail longer, about one and a third times the length of the hook, so we're about there. I'm just gonna tie that in. What size hook is it, Melvin, please? This is a 16. Small enough for me. <laughs> Another B175, is it? It is. Uh, no, it isn't. Sorry, it isn't. It's a B170. Well, 170, thank you. Okay, thank you. That's natural dry fly hook. <laughs> is it, Melvin? Pardon? Is it a, a, a light wire dry fly hook? It's a medium uh, wire. Okay. 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 Let dry. Right now, I'm going to put the wing in. So when when I'm usually putting a wing in, I, I usually come to a point midway between the end of the hook and the, and the point. So I'm somewhere there, and then I come halfway back, and that's where I put my wing in. And what I need now is my uh, stacker. So you're just taking a pinch of this. It's raw deer, is this? But it's fine stuff. And what I do now is once I've got it pinched off, is I'll do that with it, just twist it in my fingers so it splays out. And then I just wet my fingers and just pull all the fine bits out. I don't bother combing it. I do it that again with the tips and do the same. And then I'll stick it in my stacker. You don't need to bang it on the table. All I do is I just bang it on my knuckle. Get all nice and lined up. And then I twist my stack around. And then I pull them out. And I've got one row again there. Take him out. Now, I like the, the, the length of the wing to be the length of the hook, total length of the hook, so we're about there. And then it's just a case of I spin my, my, my thread uh, anti clockwise. And what that does is it throws a loop. When I throw a loop over it, it runs down my thumbnail. So I've done it again. So it's down my thumbnail. And then I'll do it three times. And then holding it tight, I then pull it tight. Nice and steadily, pull it tight. Put three or four turns on. And then put another. As I'm coming down the hook shank slightly. And then what I'll do. I shouldn't have let go there, but I have my hands. I'll cut that off at an angle. Just neaten everything up. Get the ones out of the way that I missed. Can you hear me all right, can you? Yes, yeah. well, isn't it? 
So what do you think to the setup? Is it clear enough? Yeah, mm -hmm. very good. Fantastic. Yeah, so I'm just coming down in soft turns. If I don't pull, just come down in soft turns, that deer hair behaves itself and doesn't really splay out. As soon as I start to put tension on it, it will splay out. Okay. So we're good. Let's come back here. We'll give it a lift. It's a little bit further forward than I would have liked. Take that one. Enough. Again, this is Semper Seal, and what I've done, I've blended it with um, uh, a bit of orange and a bit of, um, sorry, it's it's golden olive, and I've put some orange in it, and I've put a little bit of um, olive in it as well, light olive. Now, what I need to do with this is I need, this to be tight, a tight dubbing noodle. So I'm licking my fingers, I'm licking, I'm just licking my fingers, and then I rub my fingers together and it becomes waxy. Okay, when it becomes waxy, I can then put my dubbing on. But I'm really, really putting a lot of pressure on. And in doing that, I've got a nice, nice thin dubbing needle. It's not a, what I would usually do for a wet fly. For a wet fly, I'd have it a little bit more open. So I'm just putting a, a turn on so it locks everything up. And then I'm coming on. I'm going to put a little more on. Lifting that wing, coming underneath it. Get rid of all this little bit that's left. Dragging it back. And then whip finishing. And what I normally do is I put a bit of silk glue on. Well, they never come undone when you're super bored. Nice little olive pattern. Very nice. Melvin, is this this Semper Seal stuff? Is it yep. um, is it an, a natural product or is it no? Artificial? It's synthetic. It's synthetic. It's okay. synthetic. The yeah. the all the whole ethos behind Semperfly pro products is it's not natural. It's uh, synthetic. Okay. Okay. And it's also it just needs a little trim. This. And does it have that same translucency as um, real seal fur? 
it's the next best best thing. Other than more hair, more hair and sympathy will make a great substitute. The Irish have been using more hair for years. Frankie McPhillips and his traditional Irish dubbins, that's not seal swear, that's more hair. Yeah. yeah. I've got some, yeah. but I don't, I don't use it very often. I prefer seal fur. It, it, it's very translucent, is seal swear, but it, yeah. it creates the same effect, John. Yeah. You know, as, when the light hits it, as you yeah. as you, you you're bringing your flies back and you're lifting them, and the the, the light hits them as you're looking at it as it's coming back. Right, it's the same halo. It creates yeah. the same halo. Right, right, okay. And the but fact it that is, you... it is, and... uh, it, it is that seal's fur is is just that little shinier. Yeah, seal's fur can be quite crinkly, really, can't it? I mean, you do have to sometimes chop it up. <laughs> The baby seal spurs are the best, but you've got to you've got to think, John. Yeah, we can no longer import seal spur into the country. No, uh, so we're using you up existing still, stocks still, then. Pardon? You, we're using up existing stocks still, presumably. Presumably. Yeah, yeah. I dare say that some come in by, around the back door. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Come, and visit, come and visit me here in Canada. We still get it. I was going to say you'll be able to get it. I mean, but I mean, I think the thing is that I think what people find distasteful is that they're clubbing these seals, uh, these baby seals, uh, and then stripping the, the deer hair off. But I understand that there <laughs> are sorry. times when these she seals shed their baby fur and it wanders, wanders around Canada like... Um, uh, tumbleweed, but whether you'll be able to tell me, Rick, if that's wrong or not. Uh, if it, uh, that, that, that's 2,000 miles north. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah. honestly have no clue. I do know that, that the Zemper seal is as close as I found as well. The only complaint I have, and I told, said that at the fly jam, is it, the fibers are very long. So you, you, you do definitely you have to chop to it up. Them. Yes. You yes. have to cut them unless you want to use it for like a like a dub leech where you want to pull that that long material out you have to cut it but other than that yeah. i agree with melvin it's as close to the natural as i've seen up to date right okay but i mean you'd use this on a river as well you know you wouldn't just use it on a lake i'm a lake fisherman really um, i do fish rivers but i class myself as a lake man or a lock man yeah good job it's a good job you said lock, not lake. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to run out of the boat next, mate? <laughs> <laughs> right. Any, any more questions about that one? Right. The only colour scheme you use on that pattern? It's just basically a, a yellow. But a is, yellow that the only colors, is that the yellow only colour you thing. go? Or do you, do you go darker? Do you go lighter ever? Ah. Uh, um, that's good enough for me. Okay. You can do whatever you want with it. What does the fly see? It, it's on a lake. It sees its silhouette, really, doesn't it? Trout, even. Yeah. I'll tell you what we did do this year. We, we, both myself and Kevin, we were fishing dries. And... Uh, there was there was one particular day where there were one or two rising, and we put we we put the dries on, um, but not not loads of fish dry, uh, um, um, rising. It's not like when you go down and there's um, uh, buzzers coming off, um, and you're coming into the evening. There's not fish everywhere picking picking flies off. You will get a rise now and again, and you will throw your flies where you think that trout's coming up and you can you can hold it there and hold it there hold it there and it'd ignore it but what ha what i learned was if i overcast it if i overcast the fish right and i drew it back over the fish before i finished drawing it back they had it <laughs> yeah and that worked on a couple of occasions didn't it kevin it did so, one particular one five pounds uh, yeah something like that i think it's your scales i'm sure your scales are out 
Yeah, my eyes. <laughs> yeah, nice fish. Right, okay. I'm going to tell you a, a, a fly based on the gorgeous George. Oh, that's a good fly. Oh, I just drew this. Um, I'm going to tie it. Oh, I'll get rid of all this material that I've got on my desk. <sighs> so I can reuse it again. It's based on a gorgeous George. But it's not as bright and it's not as gory. The body is going to be made out of um, this crystal chenilles of uh, that Semperfly have just brought out. Stuff. You know, that us lock anglers in Ireland just generally wouldn't give it house room. But Kevin will tell you, the fishing in Ireland is changing. They're learning a lot of the, the English and the Scots and the Welsh competition anglers. And they're using more of this sort of material. They're using more of what we would English um, rainbow trout fishermen would call standard material. Never seen in Ireland. Anyway, right. Well, yeah. Have a go at this fella. And I'm going to tie it with a longer. George's were generally tied with a, just an ordinary length uh, olive hackle. Um, I'm going to tie it with a an olive hackle with a. Um, I don't know who that is, <laughs> but I'm going to tie it with a. Um, Um, a pheasant dyed olive, Michigan blue dyed olive. So it just gives it that little bit more movement. Right. Well, Melvin, can you see who, who it is that's uh, got the background noise and mute them? I can try. Who's just had the phone on? Nobody's owning up to it. <laughs> yeah, it's me. Sorry. Right. Uh, I'll take it with a an olive thread. I use the threads that I use are Semperfly's classic wax. Game changer thread for me. I use my standard is is a twelve knot. I, I I was a great believer in uni threads. I thought if David McPhail uses uni thread, they're good enough for anybody. Uh, uh, but until I started using this stuff, yeah, it's strong, it's thin. I, I even use it down. Well, I'm going to use some tonight. Probably uh, eighteen knot. and it's 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 strong. It's good, you know. For anybody that can that, that, that can tie a fly, you, you'll be able to. Or have been tying flies for any length of time, you'll be able to use that, no problem. Right. Is that on the B one seventy size sixteen again? This is a B one seven five size uh, ten. You can put them on eights. You can put them on twelves. Right. Okay. So this is going to be for. You can put a orange tag on if you want. I'm not going to bother. Um, I'm just going to put this tail on, which is. Um, Globe right number 11. It's gone again, sorry. There we go. After so long, the video link from my camera cuts out. Does that on mine, Melvin? Yeah. If you put I it haven't figured a way yet. I tried to stop it. Oh, I have, of stopping it. If you put it on record and you record on it and then wipe it afterwards, it won't cut out. Right, okay. I'll try about that. Right. 
Now, length of the tail. I like to have the length of the tail about the length of the gape of the hook. Up there. Right, and I did have a brush somewhere. I dropped it on the floor. That's where it is. I'm just going to brush it out. Okay. Jobs are good and Just put that jungle cock there. Don't like using jungle cock. Too expensive. <laughs> I cry every time I use some. <laughs> <laughs> Two York, son. Oh, yeah. Yes. My lad once said to me when he was small, he said, Dad, how come we only ever see you when you're putting something in your wallet? How come we only ever see your wallet? when you're putting something in it. I says, well, if you spend it, lad, you'll never add any money. Right, so, this is uh, Olive Makes no sense to me. Chenille from Sem Semperfly, and it's the eight millimeter. So I'm just putting one turn on at the back, and then I'm coming back up in, touching t uh, in uh, open turns. So they're not touching turns like you would a, a blob, Pull them back. These are quite open turns. There we go. I would never have used this material a couple of years ago to put for, for uh, Fishing for brown trout. For fishing for rainbow trout, yes, but not for fishing for brown trout. But I've certainly learned my lesson. Right, so I'm just going to put a layer of thread down there, because we're now going to put the legs in. And the pheasant tails dyed orange. And I'm not one of these people that say they've all got to be facing downwards or upwards, the, the, the legs. Um, you put them on how you want. I, I, I find they work it any old how. So, but I don't want them too long. So I have them. So the first joint sort of comes by the tail, if you like. So we'll tie them on the top. Do you know your own pheasant tails, Melvin? It is. Yeah. Let's put them on that. They're all gone, gone one way. Um, yes, they are my pheasant tails. I tie them myself because they're long nights in York, long winter nights in Yorkshire. Mm. But probably not as long as they are in Canada. But when Jill's watching Coronation Street or something like that, I can sit down in the same room and we can, uh, I can tie, no, not pheasant tails. It's pheasant tail dyed orange. I think I'd go insane tying those. Pardon? I said, I think I'd go insane tying those. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the patience. What's to tie? say I'm not insane? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, so the legs are in. I'm now going to put an olive hackle in. What's the hackle, Melvin? This, oh, this is um, um, a hen, an olive hen. Most of my front hackles on 
just doubled it again on uh, wet flies or uh, a hen. All movement in hen and that. All, all movement, yeah. And really, if I was tying a gorgeous George, that would be it. That would be all the hackle you would have on it. But I'm just going to give it a bit more movement. And I'm going to tie my golden pheasant in. Just makes it that little bit more leggy. Usually they don't break on me like they are breaking on me tonight. What I generally do is once I've dyed them, is I put them in a hair conditioner. I have no other use for hair conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you there. <laughs> Have you ever used fabric softener? You can use fabric softener, softener, you know, wool softener, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, hey, I've never, I've never tried it, but uh, I, I was just a little more concerned about the smell. Works. It works well on deer hair. Yeah. You concerned about the smell? Yeah, it's just such a strong, it's such a strong smell, right? So uh, it has a strong smell. To, yeah. Yeah, I guess you'd have I don't, to find I don't it. think it. Do you think it would pull the fish off that? I, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Maybe that that's probably just more of a uh, a thing that the for the tire than the fish, right? Yeah, we have w what we call coarse fishermen over here. Yeah, uh, fish for roach and bream and yeah, um, such perch and what have you. And they actually put the, they put um, smells into their baits. Yeah. Well, that's why when I answered that uh, the conversation we were having. Uh, a few days ago, or yesterday, I guess it was on the chat there. Um, it, it, here in North America, if you buy American WD-40, it's made with fish oil, right? We used to put it on sea fishing birds, now. Yep, we used to do it all the time. Put just squirt it on our on our hoochies or whatever, going for salmon. Worked like a charm. Yeah, I've used some of that bait stuff for carp flies, and it smells absolutely disgusting. Isn't it? If you if you want good relations in the house, you do not bring it into the house. I can assure you, you keep it out in the garage, well aerated. <laughs> it's foul stuff, really foul. Yeah. Mind you, it does help catch carp. Yep. Yeah. I must admit, I don't think it affects the feathers after a while because I think the smell disperses the conditioner. Right. But I do believe that scent um, is one of the fish's main ways of seeking out food. So yeah. if something that doesn't smell right, I think it does, you know, obviously put off fish a little bit if they're wary. Right, well, okay, I, now. I can, I can tell you, I did an experiment years ago when I was a smoker, and uh, if I was smoking while I was on the water and tying flies on, I'd catch less fish. Um, so I started every time I got to a lake, first thing I did is I got a big handful of mud and washed my hands in the mud of that lake. So I smelt like that lake and I found my uh, catch rate went up significantly. Arthur Cove of Cove's pheasant tail nymph um, fame used to blow tobacco smoke on his flies and he said it increased his catch rate. <laughs> right now then we're going to put a throat in. I'm going to show you how I put throats in. Okay, that's what we're going to use as a throw, guinea fowl, dyed uh, hot orange. Right, 
So what I've done is I've just nipped the centre out of the uh, guinea fowl uh, feather. And I'm going to decide how many fibres I want. Probably that many. Okay. And then I'm putting it, offering it up to the, the throat of the fly. And I'm just going to put a couple of turns on. Get it sitting right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it until I've got the length of the the hackle I want. The length of the throat. Right, how about there? It will be okay. Right, so I put another turn on, tight turn, and I'm coming underneath. And then I'm just snipping off. Okay, so nice, nice throat hackle. And all I need to do is chop that off. And I've got another two or three flies from that. Neaten everything up. Oh dear. Taking one or two out. Neaten everything up. And just put the jungle cock on. Uh, Melvin, thank you very much for the uh... For the for this night, it was awesome. Great time. I got to get back to work, unfortunately, but okay. Thank you very much. We'll talk. You're to very everybody. welcome. You're very welcome, Melvin. What you used for the body is that isn't that rather like the old fit you used to get from Steve Barton? Um, it was it was before my day with Steve Barton. He, he, I think I'd been fishing about three or four years when he died. So he died in about, what, 2003, something like that. So I, did, I weren't familiar with his products. Were you not? No. I think there's other people that did it as well. Yeah. I know a man that will know. Steve Nielsen. You know Steve Nielsen? Yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah, well, he'll know. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right, so. I've got quite a bit of it myself. Yeah. Um, but looking at this, that looks very similar. Yeah. In actual fact, I'm still using some of Steve Parton's thread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the stuff. Oh, right, yeah. But uh, Semperfly sell it as um, Crystal Chenille. Well, they all change the name of it, don't they? Yeah. Lots of, lots of these things are the same thing, just give it a different name. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll just wait to finish this, and then that's that. I think years ago, Fly Tire's mate died and made most of it. Because they were the only ones with the machinery. Yeah. That's quite a busy fly at the head, isn't it? I yeah. Mean, you put in quite a, you put, what, two or three hackles in, and then you put jungle cock cheeks in as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite busy there. Looks a nice fly. It reminds me, there right. is a wet fly with a, there's a wet fly with a red tail, which is a red tag for grayling. But is it the treacle parkin, which has the yellow? Yes. I thought it, yeah, it reminded me of something, yeah. Mm. I think that's um, um, a Yorkshire fly into the treacle park. It, it, I, I don't know, Melvin. I, yeah. I know, I know I'm reading about it in a book. Mm. Anyway, that's a version of the George come octopus. But um, I'd fish that anyway. 
I'd fish that up, definitely fish that for brown trout. Definitely, mate. That would be done a treat in August. I didn't get all of that, but yeah, that would go down a treat in August. Last right. August, last August in Shailen, a, a fly something similar to that with booby eyes actually won a competition with six or seven pound fish. With booby eyes, yeah. You see, there you go. That's the, that must be the English or the the British competition scene influence on the Irish. That definitely. Must be. <laughs> right. Okay. We'll get on to something else. We've got enough time, haven't we, guys? Yeah. You're all right for time. Plenty of time, Melvin. Just tell me if I'm waffling off to waffling on too much. I think we've got it all there now. I better go around with the Hoover tomorrow, as my guts will be for Gartis. Ah, fuck it. <laughs> right. We'll, we'll do the spent now. Right. Okay. Really, we ought to have Kevin telling us how to take spent because he's the the, the expert fishing the spent. Is there one to that sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> There's two types that. of spent. Two types of spent. There's the spent that are laying their egg, laying their eggs, which sit off the water, and there is the spent that lie flat. So it depends what the, the flies are doing and what the fish are taking, whether they're taking the fish that's laying its eggs or the time the fish, uh, sorry, or they're fishing the fly, so they're taking the fly that's actually dead or dying, which is lying flat in the water. Anyway, this can do for both. This is a... B one seventy size eight. What did I do with the tail? No, it's there. Got them. So put the wings in first. Let's show you better how I put the wings in. Right, so between the point, sorry, the barb and, uh, and uh, sorry, the point and the, the end of the hook, we want to be halfway along. And then we come back in half. And the wing of a spent mayfly is nearly black, okay? And what I've done here is I've mixed poly yarn, wing post poly yarn, a black and a white together. <clears throat> and then I've just brushed it, brushed it through. And it, it doesn't want to be a gray. You, you still want to see the lines in it. That's, that's your wing venation. Okay, of your mayfly. And how you achieve that is, is you brush it out like that, and then you'll fold it. You'll brush it out again, and you'll fold it. You'll brush it out again, and you'll fold it. And then you get those lines through it. And just roll it. Middle for diddle. Twist it. Okay, so that's the wings in.
we're going to put the rib in. And what we're going to use for the rib is the good old Easy Dub. Easy Dub yarn. We're going to tie that in. But what we're going to do this time with it, instead of just twisting it on au natural, is to just twist it, twist it right up. And we're going to put about half a dozen uh, fibres of uh, pheasant tail that have been dyed. You can use pheasant tail and moose mane or a bit of badger. Um, now, the thing about the spent is its tail is three times as long as the, the dome. So about double the, the, the left total length of the, the hook. Back down the body. And we're going to use some seal again. This needs a bit more, just break that in half. And all I'm doing is this. Doing it onto my thread. Plenty of it, it's a big fly. There's many types of, many t different ways of putting wings in or ma materials for putting wings in. This is, this is by far, I think, the easiest. You can put cock apple points in, black cock apple points, they do a great job as well. <clears throat> the duns are... <coughs> Various colours of olive, various shades of olive, from like a yellow colour to uh, quite a, quite a dark olive, um, and um, but the spent are always black and white. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put that thread in there in some hackle pliers, and I'm twisting. Okay, so I'm making a thin rope really. And I'm using that underneath the tail. And I'll tie it off there. You can, if you would like, go between the the wings. That will hold them apart a bit more. Don't have to do.
Now we'll put the hackle in. And the hackle is grizzle cock. And you want plenty of turns on. <laughs> Somebody's tired. I'm the tire to the board. <laughs> okay. Put your hat on. And again, just to dab a super glue on. The length of the wing wants to be the length of the uh, the hook. So we're looking about there-ish. That's it. As easy as that. Okay. You can actually lift the wings as well. If you lift the wing and press there like that, the wing will stop up like that. So that you've got an egg laying um, dry, um, spent. And if you want a spent that's laid flat on the water, that and that. Like that. Okay. And again, not a difficult tie. And a very effective pattern. Any questions? Hey ho. I'm getting off lightly tonight. <laughs> If I had to do any criticism on that, that fly, it would be the wings a bit, uh, a bit thick, a bit heavy. Maybe take a third out. Material again, please, Melvin. It's the the wing is just um, uh, poly yarn. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. Or wing posts, black and white, and, and um, yeah, black and white, yeah. and they're put together and brushed through. Yeah, and I remember get... you, you brushed it through about three different times, didn't you? Well, at least three different times. Um, and what you do is you put one on top of the other and then brush it out. 
yeah. brush them together. Uh -huh. uh, but then once you've brushed it out, it's probably about an inch wide. Okay. And you fold that in two and then brush it again. So you get yeah. an inch wide again. And then yeah. you fold it again. So you're doing it about half a dozen times. Yeah. And you yeah. get half a dozen streaks in it. So it looks yeah. like the wing venations. It's nice, doesn't it? Thank yeah. you. It, it just doesn't look a, a, a big, strong colour that are just... You know, it has some highlights in it. Okay. And it'll float. Oh, yeah, it'll float, all right. It float, all right. Okay. Put my material away. Another one tomorrow. You got another session tomorrow? No. I'll be cleaning this lot up. <laughs> That's all being bother. I might even be in bother tonight. Oh, you can stand it. Back's broad enough. Right, the last one, muddler, silver dabbler. Just love tying dabblers. Lawrence used to like tying them. Who did? Lawrence, Lawrence Finney. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, my all time favorite, time favorite fly is this without the muddle head. But it's great with a muddle head. If you're to fish it top dropper, this is great. Uh, brown, where's me brown? It's here. Right. B170. B170, 18 knot brown. You'll see what this can do, my dear. Size 10 up. It's a, 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 10s and 12s. And it'd be a good man at can time on a 14, but they do, yeah. Okay, so there's a lot, a lot on at this head here. So I'm starting this fly right back here. Okay. And I want some silver wire. And we're going to do this time, like your, your man said, put the ribbon for her. You predominantly fish in Ireland then, Melvin? Pardon? Do you mainly fish in Ireland? No. I fish in Scotland and I fish um, in England. But if I had the choice, I would fish in Ireland all the time. If I could live in Ireland, if I didn't have grandkids, I'd be living in Ireland. I just love the place. I love the it place. I love the people. I mean, if I had to be truly honest, I think the fishing in Scotland is better. But I would rather fish in Ireland any day. Fish on the Hebrides. So again, I'm, I put the ribbon first. I'm coming down to a, a, again to a point midway between the barb and the um, point of the hook. I'm going to use a bronze mallard feather. Use this one now, as you probably know. I'm probably treat, teaching uh, teaching a grandmother to suck eggs here, but the feathers, the, the wing fibers down here are quite soft, and the, the wing fibers up here, up here, this bit of the feather, are quite stiff. And for tail feathers, we want them quite stiff. So I'm going to knit my tail feathers out from. 
the top of the feather. There ain't enough there, so I'll give it some more. I'll get first class duck feathers because I shoot myself. Not shoot myself, but you know, I shoot <laughs> duck. <laughs> So I usually get the pick of about two or three hundred. So all I'm doing is lining the tips up and then I'll cut about, I don't know, about five millimeter piece out. And then what I'll do now is I'll, I'll roll roll those fibres so you get a nice splay. Okay, the length of the tail is the length of the hook. Now I'll pinch and hook those on. Okay, so they're splayed very nicely. When it gets to this point, well, I don't need to do it. I'll put the rib in. It's just a silver rib, medium silver. And then, if you want to keep all the materials on top of the hook shank, it's a nice, steady, even wrap. If you start to give it some tonk, It'll start to spin your material around your hook. Okay, so back down we come. Semper seal again. Um, Claret, but I put some red in it just to. Well, there's a little bit of black in there as well, but there's a bit of red in it. I can try to keep it. Irish, the, the Irish are fantastic at blending cores. And if I wanted it to make it dark olive, sorry, dark uh, claret, what I would do is I would put some more black in it. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm making a dubbing noodle, but it's quite thin. It's not a really thick dubbing needle, noodle. Because I don't want it to be too shaggy. If it's too shaggy, you lose the rib. Right, we'll do as our friend said now. The hackle is ginger cock. Put that in our hackle pliers. Now, I like my um, hackle on dabblers to be quite long, so it's at least double the uh, gap of the hook. A couple of turns at the head and then down in about three.
Schnitt. Tuck away stuff. And then I'll tell you what we'll do this time. We'll scruff it up with the uh, dubbing scrubber. Like I say, it does nothing for the hackle. And then just pull it over. Nice. We've got a nice scruffy fly. Yeah. Now there's a million and one ways to put a dabble wing on. I'm just going to show you how we're going to do mine. So what I do is I take this rubbish out from here. And then sort it out. You do with needle. And I want a piece about, mm, I don't know, half an inch. Take it out. Line the tips up. So what's happened there? Can you see that? Yeah. No, I'm, I've got a, an advertisement. I don't know. That's better. Yeah. Yeah. I had an advertisement yeah. pop up then. Right. So I've got my tips lined up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these off. I'm not going to tear them off. I prefer to cut them off. If I tear them off, I slip sometimes and it makes them look a dog. So I'm just going to lay that on my desk and I'm going to cut another one of a similar width, having got the ends right. I'm going to lay one over the other. Okay, so I've got two wing slips. There are two there. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin that anti-clockwise. The tips have moved down, lined up again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to manipulate them. It's quite easy. Just move one to one side like that. And grab the tips and just pull them and they're back level again. Now, your double wing wants to come halfway into the tail, so we're about there. Now, what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm just putting the top of the, the, the hook or the hook eye onto my wing so I can judge when I'm right in the middle. Just makes a little bump and then. I'm going to fold that wing around the hook, okay? And I'm going to put a couple of turns on, a couple of loose turns, and I'm slowly going to pull. But I'm gripping that feather very tightly. Just playing them with my finger. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back this way. And all those feathers are now locked in. Shrouds it nicely, doesn't it? It does, yeah. And now I need to cut these off. Well, there is a there's a, a quite an, a, an easy way of doing this. What, what I do is I, I fold it all back, and then I come in here, 
And what that does, it just holds all these proud. And I just snip it. Then nothing comes over the eye. Right, okay. So now we want to put the muddle head on. I would have preferred a darker roy rodeo to that, but <clears throat> I used it all up at the Yorkshire show last week. I've got some dye at uh, some some raw in a a bath of fairy liquid getting all the grease out of it at the moment. So it's wet through, so I can't really use that. So I'm taking quite a pinch. And I'm cutting it off right at the skin. And again, we're going to do the, the twist and get rid of all the rubbish. And there is quite a bit comes out. Turn it over and do the same to the tips. And then I'm going to stack it again. Just banging it on me knuckle. So they're all stacked. Pull them out. Get rid of all this rubbish again. Right, none of this rolling it around the hook, just get hold of it. And we're going right to the back of the body there. And again, we're wrapping it around the hook. Spin it anti-clockwise, your thread. Couple of loose turns, one, two loose turns. Just as you, third loose turn, just as it starts to splay, let go and let go. Okay, and time, and then just run your thread through. A couple of times towards the head. Then tap on the front of your, of the head of the, uh, oh, look at that spun okay, yeah, that's, it'll do. Right. Tap on the eye, make it visible, pull everything back. Think on we're using 18 knot thread here. A lot use six. The only reason I'm using 18 knot is I haven't got any 12 knot. <laughs> but it just shows you how strong this thread is. Right, and I'm just going to whip finish. Let's get it right. Right. You can go on and you can trim your muddler heads with your scissors like that, as from like that. But what I like to do is I like to pull everything forward. And then cut it off at the eye. So I've already got the general shape of my muddle head. Mm 
and just pull everything back. Rang up the dial would be around what I didn't understand. Pardon? Sorry. But I missed that. No. And then I didn't used to do this, but I'm, st I'm starting to do it a little bit more now. I use a, a razor blade and I just come in. And give it a bit more shape. I like to flatten that out at the bottom there. Oh, it's one of those um, uh, shaped razor blades, isn't it? That's exactly what it is. Yeah, I was just going to say I use one of those. They're good. I can't remember the name of it now. It's from it's Stone uh, Stoneflow. Sto Stoneflow or something, Stoneflow. is it? Stoneflow, yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah, good thing, isn't it? Getting a bit dull. And there's your muddler head, really. A bit rough for that, Melvin. Ever take a cigarette lighter to it? Some do, yeah. It'll do. There's your dabbler muddler. <laughs> Any questions? No, perfect. That's good. Bit rough that. Melvin. Yes, sir. Do you know what looked well on that? Say that again. Do you know what looked well on that? Instead what? of the hair. Instead of the, the deer hair. Go on. Booby eyes. <laughs> <laughs> You're a wicked man. You're a wicked man, Mr. Sheridan. <laughs> but seriously, the way you cut the deer hair first, I actually like that technique. And you can yeah. actually leave it like that. It would yeah. probably disperse more water. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, that, that's correct. I just wanted to show you that technique. That, that's bloody rubbish. <laughs> Fish won't care. No, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In fact, I really ought to take that off and do it again. I think you're right, though, Kevin. Baby eyes would look better. Yeah, especially your technique, Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> You're terrible, man. You really are. <laughs> How dare you? Listen, Melvin. Well done. Thank you very much. No, I'm going to put. A I'm going to put. A, I'm going to put a right muddler head on here. I'm not having well, that. I'm not gonna, wearing that. I thought you were going to put some form on. Get, get you. Get behind you, Satan. Get you behind me. <laughs> We had a good day on Mal up at Malham on Tuesday, Stevie. Did you? Yeah. Conditions wouldn't be too bad, would they? It were horrible. It were chucking it down and there were hardly any wind. <laughs> Still managed four, so I quite thought that were all right. Nothing of any great size. A two and a half. Just think on there's there's a there's a twelve and a half pounder come out of this wild brown trout this this about hundred acre water probably the best brown trout water in England and uh, you don't catch so many when you're up there but when you do get older one you get older <laughs> so we had a two and a half pound a two and a half pounder yeah 
You're up there again next week, I think, are you, Mel? I'm up again next Tuesday. And then we've got you and Mr Morgan in September. Yeah, all being well. Yeah. You've got John up there next week. I think John Lake's coming up to see you. Hey. Is he fishing with me, my team? Who? John Legg. Yes, he is. Yeah. Mike Warden for John Legg, right. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good lad, John. I don't know him. Um, oh. Oh. Did you uh, get many perch? Uh, we got We got a fair few, yeah. Um, we had uh, four over a pan and about probably 13 total but the perch in there are, they are getting bigger uh, I'll tell you what I've had I, had I had I caught a perch I'll bring it in a small perch and a big brown trout grabbed it Hmm. Did you have um, brown trout? Yeah, brown trout grabbed it. It let go, and um, a very bemused perch, <laughs> half eaten. Yeah, but the 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 brown trout came back up at it. It came off, and then lifted it out of the water. As I was lifting it out of the water, it was behind it again. Have you seen the pictures of some of the, the, the perch coming out of Grafham? There are some huge perch in Grafham. Five, huge six, perch. massive. Yeah. Two Valley always just had some good, a good head of perch in it. Yeah. Well, Malham used to have plenty of perch, but they weren't really big ones. But I think they come in cycles, don't they? Yeah. Anyway, that's better. <laughs> that's better. Okay. Any questions? So that's it. Thank you, Marvin. Bye. Yeah. Okay. Here's Melvin. Thanks again. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Cheers, Melvin. All right. Okay. Good night, everybody.